let's look at some cubic functions. Now, cubic functions are of the form f of x equal to ax cubed plus bx squared plus cx plus d. The graph of the function f of x equal to x cubed minus 3x squared plus 1 is shown below. And again, this is the same graph as was done in the graphing functions module. If you look at the graph, you can see the graph down here. A brief look tells you that there's, there's three distinct areas. There's this area here where the graph is increasing. There's this area here of the graph where between the local max and the local min, where the graph is decreasing. And then you also have the area of the graph to the right-hand side of the local min, where the graph is also increasing again. Now, just to, to make a note of that, from x equal to minus 1 to x equal to 0, the graph is increasing. At 0, 1, there's a local maximum. From x equal to 0 to x equal to 2, the graph is decreasing. That's between the max and the min. At 2 minus 3, there's a local minimum. And from x equal to 2 to x equal to 3, as we saw, the graph is increasing. The calculus interpretation of this um, is shown below. And the distinct regions of the graph are outlined as well. And you can see there that between these two values of x here, in this area of the graph here, you can see that f dash x is greater than zero. In other words, the derivative is positive. Between these two points here, between the local max and the local min, you can see that the graph is decreasing, which means that the derivative, f dash x, has to be less than zero. And equally, for this region here, the graph is increasing, which means that f dash x is greater than zero. Now, if you just write down some positive and negative signs, this region of the graph, the slope, is positive. This region of the graph, the slope is negative. And this region of the graph, the slope, or dy dx, is also positive. Now, in order to go from positive to negative, you have to pass through zero. And the place where you pass through zero is this point here, your local max. Equally, to go from a negative value to a positive value, so it's negative slope here, positive slope here. To pass from a negative to a positive, you also have to go through zero, which means that your slope must be zero somewhere, and the slope is zero at this point here at the local min. Remember, f dash x in this case is equal to 3x squared minus 6x. Again, the value of the derivative depends on x. As x changes, the slope changes. So f dash x and dy dx mean exactly the same thing. Now, because the local maximum point is on one side of the x-axis and the local minimum point is on the other side of the x-axis, the function must therefore cross the x-axis three times. So you can see here that you have your max above the x-axis up here. You have your min below the x-axis down here. And for that reason, the graph has to pass through the x-axis three times. In other words, there's three distinct routes. One, two, and three. Now, finding the two turning points. To find the two turning points of this function, you, you begin with what you should always begin with. Whenever you're asked to find the max of the min, you let dy dx equal 0. Therefore, 3x squared minus 6x equals 0. We we'll factor out x, which means that x equals 0, there's something happening, there's a max or a min. And at x equals 2, something else is happening, there's also a max or a min. Now, just at this point here, just to note, you could have, if you wanted, used the minus b formula, or you could have done it with, with, with some other factors if you wanted. You could have taken out 3x if you wanted there in that case. Again, there's a variety of ways of solving quadratic equations, as I'm sure you're aware of at this stage. This is just one way of solving the quadratic equation. Now, there are therefore two turning points at x equals 0 and x equals 2. To find their y-coordinates, you put those values of x back into the, f to the y function, or back into f of x. In this case, y is equal to x cubed minus 3x squared plus 1. So what you do is you put 0 back in, and you get f of 0. And f of 0 works out to be 1, which means there's a max or a min at 0, 1. And you do the same with x equal to 2. You put 2 back into the original function, the one that says y equals, or f of x equals. And you put it back in, and you get 2 cubed minus 3 times 2 squared plus 1, which means f of 2 works out to be minus 3. So therefore, that means that there's a local max or a local min at 0, 1 and at 2 minus 3. How do you establish which one is which? Well, since y equal to 1 is higher on the graph than y equal to minus 3, then 0, 1 must be the local max, and 2 minus 3 
has to be the local min as we saw on the graph earlier on. So what we're saying is this, if you test any value of x between 0 and 2, in other words when you go from your max down to your min, the first derivative should be negative. So let's test that. f dash x is equal to 3x squared minus 6x. If we put in any value between 0 and 2, we should get a negative answer for the derivative. Well, f dash 1 is equal to 3 times 1 squared minus 6 times 1, which is equal to minus 3, and this is exactly the case. So what the calculus is doing is it's telling us exactly how the graph is behaving. And the result, f dash 1 equal to minus 3, a negative slope, is completely consistent with the graph. Just to reiterate that point, the derivative here is negative because the function is decreasing, which means the function has a negative slope when x is 1, and that slope has a value of minus 3.